what would I say is the shadow of INTPs? Now, this is an interesting idea. I've been actually thinking about this in terms of um, taking what is called the gene keys, not gene keys as in like Scooby-Doo, but gene keys as in genetic keys. It is a system that is relative to the I Ching and, and an extension of human design. Uh, so it's a little esoteric, but it's really taking the teachings of the I Ching and applying it to a map. And this map has these different spheres on it. All the spheres have the same meaning for everyone, but inside of those spheres are what are called gene keys. There are 64 of them, and it's essentially, essentially remixed for you to take from your genetic profile and, you know, uh, uh, apply the certain lessons to certain areas of your life, right? And so you can go to, I think it's genekeys.com and you can get your profile pretty easily and start to explore that if you're interested in like a little bit of esoteric material. What I got from that is that each sphere and gene key has these three paths to them. In a way, it's uh, the challenge, it's your creativity through that challenge or away from that challenge, and then your essence. You can almost think of it as the concept of hell, purgatory, and heaven, or you can think of it as shadow, your gift, and then your city, S-I-D-D-H-I. -D -D -I. It's this Sufi word that means uh, accomplishment or achievement or mastery. And so, while uh, Richard Rudd, who is the creator of Gene Keys, applies this to those spheres and to the Gene Keys, I thought it would be really interesting to start applying these to cognitive functions. And uh, so specifically the three sort of levels of health, because a lot of the personality type spaces talk about health, or at least I should say the average sort of consumer of personality types approaches it from a perspective of like, am I a healthy version of my type, right? And I, I think that is an interesting challenge that I don't know that anyone's really answered that very well. And by well, I mean that people can approach it from a bias of wanting to prove that they're a good person, wanting to prove that they're not toxic or blaming. It's like, those people are unhealthy. Like who would... Or if you're saying that you're unhealthy, it's like maybe you're using it from a frame of victimhood, right? Like you might be using it as an excuse to like keep yourself down versus acknowledging something that you need to work on, right? So it can be a really tricky endeavor to identify this health or unhealth idea when it comes to personality types. And then it's like also not very simplified, right? So it's something I'm actively working on, but I can at least share a little bit of what I'm seeing in terms of the shadow of the INTP. So in the INTP perspective, the cognitive functions are introverted thinking, extroverted intuition, introverted sensing, and extroverted feeling. In each of these cognitive functions, I suspect, again, has this sense of health or unhealth associated with it. And um, the gift, the, or I should say the shadow, the gift, or the city, for the sake of ease, let's use uh, challenge, the creative act, and then the essence, right? So uh, let's talk about introverted thinking, because I, I don't want to get into the weeds too much yet because I'm still source sussing a lot of it out. Uh, I'd certainly love your perspective on if this resonates or not. But I think for INTPs, I suspect one of the main challenges is the word pedantic. Pedantic or criticism, right? It's, um, and it's, uh, uh, it's one thing to have criticism in terms of an audit, in terms of trying to improve ourselves, but there's a difference between lifting ourselves up and improving ourselves and auditing ourselves and improving our, our situation and tearing others down. So what pedantry does or criticism does or even self-criticism does, is it keeps us in a place of feeling superior through picking apart little details that, you know, aren't relevant to the conversation, but it's something you know better. So 
you're able to highlight. It's like the grammar Nazi kind of person, or it's the, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's the type of people I get frustrated with in the personality space, which is being pedantic about the nuances of whether or not this type does this or this trait of this personality type or, or, uh, for example, I put out a video recently about millennial men and generations. And most of the comments are pedantic comments where it's just like, Gen Z is 26 years old right now. They're not millennials. I'm like, okay, but that's not relevant to what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's almost a deflection, right? So this pedantry can be a deflection from a core truth that may actually have you change your mind or change your perspective or change your beliefs or change the way you think or God forbid, be wrong about something, right? It's the type of INTP or the type of introverted thinking person who is not willing to be wrong, not even remotely willing to be wrong, always has an opinion, always has an excuse, always has a way to be slippery about their thinking so that, uh, you know, they always come out on top in some way, shape or form. And I say this from personal experience. I do this all the time. And when we're in this shadow space, and by shadow, I don't mean darkness or evil. It's just unconscious. It's just when we're in an unhealthy or spiral or in a uh, place where we're dysregulated or we need to get our needs met in some sort of way, or we're just needing a recharge, or we need an update of our thinking, we can really get pedantic about the details of something that just really doesn't ultimately matter, right? And so with that comes criticism of others, but also at the same time, that can be pointed back at the self. So you could be so self-critical to the point where you're never right about anything. You're so diffuse that there's no room to take responsibility. There's no room to uh, allow for auditing to take hold. There's no room for any sort of change of thought process that you know, you're so slippery about your thinking that you are, um, you're so certain that you're stupid or a bad person or irresponsible or lazy or whatever self-criticism or judgments you have about yourself, right? That just continues to pervade your life. And that can also be an example of this sort of pedantic self-criticism or other criticism shadow of introverted thinking. So uh, the path through to the essence, the creative sort of movement through is through accuracy and through uh, auditing. So auditing, again, is very different than criticism. Uh, auditing is more like constructive criticism, where you're acknowledging the good things that are happening. You're acknowledging that everything is great as it is. We can just improve. Uh, and accuracy is looking further than our beliefs. So a lot of that pedantry is is nonsensical data. It's not relevant. And um, accuracy brings in relevant data. It's looking for what actually makes sense in this situation, not the categorization, not the language on top of stuff, but what is actually happening underneath. The discovery of core principles and the seeking out of core principles, not getting caught up in the the menial little details that don't mean anything, right? So auditing is, is the willingness to second guess yourself. It's the willingness to be wrong. It's sometimes a desire to be wrong, but not such a desire to be wrong where you make your, yourself wrong all the time. But it's an excitement about new ideas. It's an excitement about new data. It's an excitement about uh, the willingness to course correct or self-correct. You know, you're not trying to correct others in terms of running around, having a certainty, and then trying to convince others of that certainty. You're basically being more of a calibrator than a critical person, right? And waiting for opportunities and finding the right opportunities to be supportive with your thinking as opposed to forcing it on others, right? So uh, accuracy is the word that personality hacker uses to describe introverted thinking. And I think it's really uh, important to use this as a mechanism for asking the question, am I actually being accurate right now? Not accurate in the pedantic sense, again, 
but accurate in in the sense of like, is this relevant? Is this helpful? And does this lead to the essence, which is function? Now, function is an interesting word in the sense that um, what we're ultimately trying to discover with introverted thinking is mechanics. Now, with ISTPs or ESTPs, it's more obvious because they're looking for mechanics of physical things. And, you know, that's a job, a mechanic of a car, looking at the details of the car and figuring out how the system works, how it all fits together, and making sure that there are uh, all the pieces in place that allow for the car to function. This can happen for someone who's a surgeon, right? You are looking for what allows for the body to function. Uh, in terms of an INTP, you're typically, depends on your career, but I'll use the example of like astronomy. You're looking at the functions of the universe. You're looking at, you know, cognitive functioning. <laughs> you're looking at, uh, you know, trying to understand uh, principles and the way it all comes together. So where creativity with accuracy is the guide to function, you know, ultimately the emergent is healthy functioning, right? So functioning is either, again, in the astronomical sense, it's like, you are able to observe a type of functioning happen, and then you sort of break it apart, and then you can reconstruct that functioning in different contexts. That's where extroverted intuition comes in for INTPs. Uh, or for uh, psychology, again, cognitive functioning. So healthy cognitive functioning is the result of understanding your internal system, your internal code, and bring, being able to <clears throat> piece a whole bunch of stuff together to ensure that you're a healthy person, you're healthy psychologically, that you have healthy relationships, that you have healthy activities, that you are functioning in the world through healthy mechanics. Uh, I think about video games as well. Video games have mechanics, right? It's the, this character does this thing, you press this button and this happens. If this, then that. If I do this, then that happens. Those, those are mechanics. And so if you have good mechanics, uh, which may be also a word used within the creativity part, too, is like pursuing healthy mechanics. Functioning is the result of healthy mechanics, right? So once you're auditing and you're observing and you're finding problems or you're fine-tuning, then you have healthy functioning and healthy mechanics in your life, in your body, in your car, <laughs> you know, whatever the situation may be. So... Uh, I think that covers introverted thinking, and I'd love to cover other cover other functions, but I just want to know if this resonates with you, if this is an interesting concept, if this is clicking with you in any kind of way. It's something I'm considering creating a course around to get into depth, but I could do other functions as well uh, for free, no problem. Um, what would be the closest thing right now is I have a course called uh, the INTP Empowerment Guide, which is a look at all of the cognitive functions of the INTP and then providing support using the uh, shadow functions as well to round out our full experience and then to uh, look at careers, relationships, parenting, other aspects of how we can, you know, for example, with introverted thinking, how does extroverted thinking support introverted thinking? That's what the course basically offers. How does introverted intuition support extroverted intuition? How does extroverted sense sensing support introverted sensing, right? So if you're curious about that sort of stuff, that course already exists. But if you want more of this idea of the health to the unhealthy to healthy pipeline, so to speak, I don't have an official word or name for this yet, uh, but I'm playing with it for all the functions. Uh, let me know what you think about this. And if you want more, I would certainly love to do it. So, um, my name is Christian Rivera, a.k.a. C-Note. I also have a substack, dopamine.substack.com. You can follow and support there. I'll put a link to that below as well. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, there are more videos about extroverted intuition and introverted thinking all sprinkled throughout this channel. Just give it a little search or click the video that uh, is presented to you to uh, continue down the rabbit hole. Appreciate you. Talk again soon.